Okay, these are some more problems from section uh, 4.6, and the first one is the y equals, sorry about my equation over here, y equals negative 3 cotangent of pi over 2. So it looks like I've got kind of an amplitude change here as far as the what's happening uh, vertically with it, and then it looks like I have a something in here going to change the period. So there's a couple ways to do this. We could look at the period, and we think it would be that as being uh, pi over b, which is going to be pi divided by pi over 2, or pi times 2 over pi, which is just 2. Or we could check and see, we know that normally for the cotangent, we have asymptotes when this is 0 or where that's pi. So if I set pi over 2, x equals 0, I get x equals 0. And if I set um, it equal to pi, pi over 2, x equals to pi, Uh, then, again, I get x equals 2. So that's where my asymptotes are, and I know my center is right in the middle, so this would be in radians, so this would be 1. So that's going to be my center, so let me put my asymptotes in. So I have asymptotes, again, as usual, at 0, and that's what happens, just like we always have our center at 0 on the tangent. At the cotangent, we have our one basic asymptote starting at 0. And then the second one's the one that's going to change. In this case, it's going to go out to 2 radians. That would give me my period of two radians, and then I wanted to show two of those, so I'm going to go ahead while I've got this all set up, this ruler here. I'll go ahead and put two more radians, so that would be four. Something like that, okay. So those are my asymptotes. Uh, these are my centers. One and three. And again, this is my cotangent, so and I got my asymptotes. So I just have to find my checkpoint, and my checkpoint would be right here, which would be a half and three halves. Now let's just put this in and see what happens. If I put a half in here, one half times pi over two is pi over four. The cotangent of pi over four is one. Okay, that's normally here. But I don't have 1, I've got to multiply that by negative 3, so that's going to drop this 1 down to a negative 3, so right there. So it's going to start to look like the tangent form, sort of. Okay, this is my 0. All right. And I could put 1 in there, and the cotangent of pi over 2 is 0. And then 3 halves. If I put 3 halves in there, I get 3 pi over 4, and that's going to be negative 1. The cotangent of 3 pi over 4 is negative 1 because it's in the second quadrant. Pi over 4 is 1, but the second quadrant is negative 1. But times negative 3 makes that positive 3, so that's going to be here. So you can just put those in mentally, or you can make a table. Put those in. Either way, this is what our, our checkpoints look like, so we know it's going to come up like this. It's going to be one of those little steeper ones because of my scale, which is, a little, or the, which is a little bit harder to draw. And I'm going to go away to get close to those asymptotes. All right. And then my second one's over here, second period. Same thing. This is my center, so I go halfway between the center and the asymptotes for my checkpoint. And it's going to line up and be the same as these. So down here, I've got this one over here at negative 3. And this one over here at 3. So once you have 1, it's easy to draw the second one. It just follows the same pattern. Comes up like this. Through all this writing, of course. Sorry about that. There you go. Okay, so I hope that makes sense for you. And then number 23... Now we got a shift, phase shift. Looks like we're going to shift to the left pi over 2. I don't have any kind of period change, so that's nice. I do have an amplitude of 3 here that I'm going to multiply. So normally, I'm going to start here to here. It normally goes from 0 to pi. So I'm going to shift it over, so my, I'm going to shift over to here and here. I'm going to have the same period, so period's going to be pi, but instead of starting at 0, I'm going to shift to the left, so it's going to start at pi over 2, so I'll put my asymptotes in. Get these in fast here. All 
And I got another pi, so pi over 2, that would be that 3 pi over 2. So I'll put set asymptotes for both my periods because we need two periods to graph. That was, that was nice. There we go. Okay. And then again, this is my zero is going to be around the center, and my checkpoints are going to be right halfway in the middle, so that's going to be pi over 4, negative pi over 4. And pi over 4. So, what are we going to do here? Well, if I put this number, this is going to be what? This is going to be negative pi over 4. This would be pi over 4. Now, watch when we put these in. We have to be careful. If I put negative pi over 4 in here, this is like 2 pi over 4, so... 2 pi over 4 minus 1 pi over 4 is pi over 4. And the cotangent of pi over 4 is 1. So I'm back to the normal curve 1, except it's going to be 3 because I multiplied by 3. So that's how we get these checkpoints. That's how we get the shape. Be really careful when we substitute it. Now if I put pi over 4 in here, pi over 4 plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 4. That's negative 1. Times 3 is negative 3. So there you go. And now that's back to the, you know, that's the, the normal shape. This one kind of looks like the shape of the tangent, but this, this is back to the normal shape of the cotangent. Let's curve around here. And there we go. Okay, and then we do one more over here. Again, this is my center. I can mark these in the center, between the center the zero and the asymptotes. And then again, this is going to be the positive three up here. And this will be the negative three down here. And there you go. There you go. So something like that. Okay, so there's a couple. Hope that makes sense. And I shift to the left uh, from here to there. Okay? All right. Hope that helps.